Hello everyone again. Uh, I have the honor of closing this evening uh, and I will do that by talking to you about bandits for widgets ranking. So I will first start talking a bit about bandits in general and how the idea generated and some of the kind of most basic implementation and algorithms. And then I'll move into why we started to look into bandits and we're currently looking into bandits compared to potentially other kind of more mainstream solutions, I guess, such as A-B testing, for example. Uh, and then I will close with uh, like showing you a practical implementation that we currently have a Skyscanner, uh, which we're currently experimenting with. So let's crack on. So the Bandit idea came from the world of gambling. So if you can imagine you're in a casino and you're playing slot machines, each of them will give you a certain reward, uh, a certain amount of times, a certain percentage of times. And of course, it would be great to know which one. And if we did, we would all not need to work. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't know these values. So what would you, how would you approach this problem if you were lucky enough to have an infinite amount of money? So if you have an infinite amount of money, you would probably step into a casino and be able to understand how much reward you get after n steps. And you would do that in two stages, probably. Uh, the first one would be play all the machines as many times as you can. So learn about the machines as much as possible. So in other words, you would be exploring uh, your option space. And then after you've collected enough data, you would probably stick to playing the machine that gives you the better reward, the highest reward most of the times. Therefore, you would be exploiting uh, your knowledge uh, of these machines and that space to get the highest possible reward out of all these combinations. So from this very kind of basic and a bit weird concept, the multi-arm bandit problem was created. So just to give it a bit more uh, formal introduction. Um, so multi-arm bandit, in this case, contextual uh, multi-arm bandits, which I'll be talking about later. Um, it's just a kind of reinforcement learning, meaning that you don't really know what the truth is. You just prepare the algorithm, set up the infrastructure, and then you let it run in the wild. And it's supposed to figure out what the best option is for each, uh, for each of your use cases. So when it comes to contextual Mortian bandits, there is four main, um, fame, four main essential elements to constructing them. So the first one, as the name suggests, is the context. Uh, so the context would be the area that you want to optimize for. So you may not want to find the best option across your whole website, for example, but you would want to find what works best for a particular web page, or in our case, as you will see, a particular route. Or you could even go even deeper and use it for personalization purposes and go as deep as using it on each individual user. Uh, then you need the arms. Arms is back to the gambling analogy, is simply your slot machines. So you want to try all your options. Uh, you have a limited amount of options, and you want to try to try all of them a certain amount of times. Then you have an algorithm, which, as you will see, you have plenty of choice uh, within the bandit families. And I'll, I'll briefly show a couple of them, the, the simplest ones. Uh, and then you have a reward, which is, of course, in a casino as money. Uh, in other contexts, like probably what applies to most of our cases would be conversion rates or click-throughs. Uh, so these are kind of the main four elements that you would need. So just to give an example of a couple of bandits, if the slide changes. Um, so this is probably the simplest one that you will ever see, uh, which is called Epsilon Greedy. Um, concept is really simple. So you choose a value Epsilon, let's say 0 0.1, and then you draw a random number between 0 and 1. And then on each iteration, if your random number is smaller than Epsilon, in this case, smaller than 0 0.1, then you explore. By explore meaning you would draw randomly, you would show the user at random one of the options that you have available. 
Uh, otherwise, if your number is uh, higher than 0 0.1, uh, you would exploit. So you would use all the data that you collected up to that point, pick whichever option is the best, and show them and show that to them. So the advantage of this is that it's very intuitive and easy to implement. It's literally all the code you need to do that is on the screen. But it's really sensitive to noise. Um, because you're picking at random uh, a certain amount of times and then exploiting for the rest of the times, you, chances are that, especially at first, you could get an option that seems to be the best, but it's only the best given the data that you've seen so far. So if, in our, if like in our case, you set epsilon to 0 0.1, you may find what you think is the best option and show that for the remaining 90% of the time, but you might be wrong. So this is very easy to implement, but it's also kind of very easy to fool in a way. Another, yeah. Another possible Bennett algorithm is the epsilon first. Um, again, this is very intuitive. It gets somehow close to an A-B test. You could possibly think about it a more uh, automated A-B test. Uh, so you set a range of maximum views, let's say a million, and then you set an epsilon again, 10%. So from the beginning up to your million times your epsilon, so in this case 100,000, explore. So in the first X number of iterations, you will purely explore all the time. And then after that, you exploit all the time. So it's kind of running an A-B test and then deploying the best choice. So again, similar to A-B test, but there's at no point there is a calculation of kind of confidence interval, p-value, any of that. So again, I guess if you set your epsilon high enough, so if you collected enough data, maybe slightly better than epsilon greedy, but still you're not very certain. Then it comes to something slightly a bit more complex, which is this one is what we're actually using at the moment. Uh, so it's UCB, which stands for upper confidence bound. So the concept of this, I don't know if I get the cursor, yeah. So the concept of the reward is the same, but in this particular implementation, we use the number of views, both the total views, that is across all of our options since we launched the Bandit, and also our view for that particular option that we are showing at the moment. And we're essentially adding this factor that adjusts the reward metric, taking into consideration the proportion of views that each option had against each other. So in a way, there is no, so in UCB, there is essentially no randomness anymore. You, at each step, you compute and you either so when you make a choice, is because, so when you pick the best arm, is either because you've collected enough data to be able to say, so each, each, each option had enough views to confidently be able to say that is actually the best option, or you may not have collected enough data, but the difference between the two options is big enough that even with little data, you can, you can make a choice. So you can think about maybe you have two options and they drive a 0.1% difference in conversion rate between the two. That will be in the first case, so it will need a lot of data, so a lot of views. Otherwise, you have two options. One is clearly horrendous, 1% conversion. One is great, 20% conversion. And with just a few hundred or thousand data points, you will be able to, to tell that. So moving into our use case. Um, so the problem that we had is that we are creating both in-app and on the web a lot of content, whether it is uh, kind of widget, advertisement, suggestions, uh, easier ways of filtering. Uh, it's all, it all keeps coming. And of course, all these widgets and functionalities will be competing for a pretty small uh, screen space, especially when it comes to the app. So usually, we would test options with A-B testing. So A-B testing is widely used as Skyscanner. We A-B test everything, and it's an excellent practice. But when you have a situation like this, this becomes a bit more complex. So just to give you an idea, this is what the apps usually looks like. So you make a search. Turin is my hometown. That's why it's up there, by the way. Uh, and you have your search results. But then you can have 
uh, an advertisement for a holiday option and which is kind of branded. You can have money savings trip. You could have uh, dedicated like pr your preferred airline to filter on or just be asked, do you want to filter by an airline? Or you, if you have a loyalty card, you might want to maximize for your loyalty points, for example. So as you can easily see, this is, it kind of becomes a tricky area for A-B testing. But then there's two main reasons why we're looking into bandits. Part of it is the complexity uh, of the options, but the two main ones are these. So one is timing. Um, as you can imagine, travel is quite seasonal. So you have holidays, you have business trips. Um, so we want to come up with a system that is able to optimize very quickly to these kind of changes. Uh, as you all know, if you do an A-B test, then whatever choice you make, that's kind of forever or forever unless, until you run another A-B test. And so as you can see, the two graphs have just kind of run a couple of simulations. So one is, imagine you have 200,000 views on your website and you run an A-B test. So you run 50% on each variant for a week. And then the losing one, the losing option goes to zero. The other one goes to 100%. So that's great. But what if you, again, want to adjust for seasonality or even more so if you have a short campaign, for example, Black Friday is coming or Christmas is coming, you may not want to, in a way, waste one or two weeks doing an A-B test to then pick the best choice. You may want to optimize as quickly as you can. Um, so this is just, quite, this is just a, a quick simulation of the first 10,000 uh, iterations. As you can see, the kind of UC, UCB bandit is kind of able to pick up which arm is the best and is showing the winning one massively more than the losing one right away. So that was one consideration. Other consideration was, as I mentioned, A-B test, uh, it's well understood, it's a great tool um, to define a global optimal solution. But what is the optimal solution for each of the contexts? We've introduced contextual bandits. In our case, we want to optimize for each route that we serve on the planet, which is about 100,000. So if you start counting, it's 100,000 routes times all the possible permutation of all the possible options that you saw in the previous slide. You probably don't want to jump into that. It's quite scary. So contextual bandit, all you need is to feed it the four elements that we saw previously um, and leave it running and it will work out the rest. So we decided to start small because you saw a lot of content, some of which we don't have yet. So we started with the timetable widget. So as you can see on the right is the classic uh, search results. And then on the left is the timetable widget which sort of aggregates the results by the airline. Kind of makes it a more compact view and, well, in my opinion, easier to find things. But there is contrasting views on that. So in this case, context, we pick the route. Uh, the arms are timetable or no timetable, just two options, very easy. Um, algorithms, again, uh, the UCB, and then the reward is the kind of the conversion rate, of course, adjusted using the UCB. So a bit on the architecture bit, so how do we actually implement this? I'll try to go through this quite quickly because it's a lot of stuff. So. We start with our happy user uh, using our app and the logins for that goes into Kafka. We have a Samza jobs that filters and uh, aggregates the relevant from the, log, from the main app login captures the uh, bandit relevant bits of the logins. Where is my cursor? Okay. Uh, then that aggregation is stored on S3. And then we have a batched uh, AWS glue job that take the latest raw data plus, well, if it's the first iteration, just the raw data. Otherwise, the historical data would be stored back into S3. We would combine the aggregations, previous aggregations with the latest data, recompute for each route 
any charm which one is the best option and store it into RDS. And then RDS is plugged into the multi-arm bandit service. Multi-arm bandit service will communicate directly with the client, essentially, with consumer service. So when the next user uses the app and say, I want to go from London to Frankfurt, we just ping the multi-arm bandit service and ask for the best option to show next. So this all sounds very fancy. Where are we at the moment? So at the moment, to be very honest, we are having contrasting results. <laughs> so we've run three experiments, um, two on the app and one on web. So on web, we have a significant improvement in conversion, which is kind of the, res the desired results, given that that's the reward metric that we fed into it. In the app, we have contrasting results, as in, in the short term, there was actually a decrease. And then as we left it running for a bit longer, it kind of evened out. So there was no significant difference uh, between the options. We are investigating why this is happening. Uh, best guess so far by looking at the distribution, the timetable that we're testing, so the widget that we're testing, has a much bigger effect on the web that it has in the app. So as you can easily imagine, it would be much easier for the bandit to pick it up if it's a, if it's a much if the difference in conversion rate between the option is broader, it would be much easier for any algorithm and also the bandit to pick it up. Um, whereas in the app, in most routes, it seems to make little difference whether you add the widget or not. And that's why the bandit is struggling a little bit into picking that up. Uh, but we're working on like, investigating why this is happening. Uh, an option is to leave it running a bit longer on both the web and the app to see if by collecting more data uh, UCB is supposed to adjust for that, even if the difference is really small. Um, there's a few considerations to be done in terms of how much do we want to leave it running, how much we can afford to leave it running before it actually gives good results. Um, and I guess at that point, we kind of enter in the realm of the complexity of the bandit, because in terms of algorithm and implementation is reasonably easy, much easier than other ways of doing machine learning. Um, but then you have a lot of things to consider, a lot of things to tune, uh, a lot of things that necessarily you don't understand straight off the box because it's not supervised. So yeah, that's where we are. So thank you very much.